This one. We start. Play, John. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما صليت على آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد إن شاء الله Yesterday, um, we went through the meanings of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Barr, uh, Al-Wali, Al-Mawla, and Al-Jabbar. So today, inshallah ta'ala, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Ra'uf, Al-Ra'uf, the All-Compassionate. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as in the Quran bin Nasi la ra'ufun rahim. He is compassionate, he is merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the meaning of al ra'uf it comes from the root al ra'fa. And uh, ra'fa in the Arabic language is ashaddu wa ablagu al rahma. It is mercy in its most extreme way. Uh, that is so the highest and the strongest and the most intense of mercy that is called Ra'fa and from this comes the name Ar-Ra'uf Ar uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is compassionate He is compassionate towards His creation subhanahu wa ta'ala He looks after them he provides for them and he does not burden them more than they can bear subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ra'uf the all compassionate the next name of Allah is at-tawwab at-tawwab and it comes from the root the tawba taba yatubu and this means to go back to something to return to something, al-ruju' uh, al-ruju' uh, this is the meaning uh, of uh, al-tawbah al-ruju' an al-shay' ila ghayri this is the linguistic uh, meaning in origin, al-tawbah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-tawwab al-tawwab and this uh, is uh, in the exaggerative form you have uh, ta'ib and Tawwab the Ta'ib is the one who returns a lot Tawwab uh, or Ta'ib is the one who returns Tawwab is the one who does that a lot right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described himself with this description or gave himself this name having this uh, attribute that is because he accepts the repentance of his servants a lot that's where it comes from and the meaning here of at tawwab is the one who facilitates assists inspires and helps the servant to repent that's one meaning the second meaning is that he subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts that repentance from his servants Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the root here is to go back, to do more, to return to do that. So Allah is tawab in that sense that He facilitates and accepts the repentance of His servants a lot. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, tawbatul abd, as the scholars say, the repentance of the human being, the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and returning back to him subhanahu wa ta'ala from committing his sins leaving committing sins and returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the repentance of the human uh, this tawbah of the human this repentance of the human is preceded 
by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting him this tawbah, helping him, inspiring him to repent, having this tawbah cross his mind, you know, having this thought of repentance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is tawab. He is the one who put that into the heart of the believer. Then he, the servant, actually repents. When he repents, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now accepts the repentance of this repentant servant. So, tawbatul abd, masbuqa bi tawbatillahi alayh. The repentance of the servant is preceded by Allah granting him, inspiring him that repentance. And it is after that, after he repents, it is, uh, uh, it is followed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepting his repentance, right? When you see in the Quran, ثم تاب الله عليهم ليتوبوا. Allah تاب, he did the action of توبة, he granted them repentance meaning. So that they will repent. So that they will repent. يعني when you read sometimes an ayah, يعني you reflect on it. تاب عليهم ليتوبوا. كيف تاب عليهم ليتوبوا؟ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires, helps, assists, gives that thought to the human. Yani inspiration, al-ilham. Then the servant repents. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts his repentance. So tawbatul abd, the repentance of the servant, has two repentance. Tawbatan min Allahi alayh. Tawbah before he repents and a tawbah after he repents. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first inspires, assists and helps him to repent. Then Allah Azza wa accepts his repentance. So the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at tawab that's what it means. It means that he facilitates inspires, helps, and grants a tawbah, repentance, then he accepts it from his servant. You can see how kind, how rahim, how ra'uf, very compassionate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, that he would uh, inspire his servant that, then he would accept that from him, the repentance from him, and uh, this meaning will come again, will come again in Ash-Shakir and Ash-Shakur. He is the one who gave the favor, helped the person to do what is uh, good, what should be done. He inspires him to do that. Then he accepts that from him and then rewards him for it. Right? Ash-Shakur and Ash-Shakir. The same meaning will come again uh, when we go through that name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here's the famous hadith that Allah is happier. Lallahu ashaddu farahan. Allah uh, is more happy than the person, than the person who was traveling. He was in a desert land and he had a camel. He had, he had his riding animal which had its food and its drink. So he went to sleep and the camel just got released and disappeared. He woke up, looked, looked for it, did his very best. He couldn't find it. He said, now there is nothing but death. So he said, he went under the shade of a tree and then went to sleep so that he will die, you know in peace, right? So then he woke up, he found his riding animal in front of him with his food and drink on it. 
So out of him being so happy, he said, Allahumma anta abdi wa ana rabbuk akhta'a min shiddati al-farah. He said, oh Allah, you are my servant and I am your Lord. He made a mistake out of so much being happy, so extremely happy. He made this mistake, uh, verbal uh, wording, uh, mistake in wording, right? Uh, because he was so happy. The hadith says, Allah is more happy, he is happier, more happy than that servant finding his riding animal. Allah is happier with the repentance of, yani the return of that disobedient servant returning to him. Allah is happier with that returning servant to him than that returning riding animal to that person right who lost it in the desert land right so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at tawab the next one is al halim the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al halim the all forbearing subhanahu wa ta'ala allah ghaniyun halim as in the quran hilm the linguistic meaning of it, the root meaning of it, is to basically control yourself so that you will not get angry and therefore execute your anger afterwards. This is the root meaning it comes from there. So uh, it is uh, a mix of patience, right? Patience and not rushing, not being hasty into uh, uh, punishing and uh, a vengeance right or vengeance so this is the name where it came from al halim right so uh, this is the root meaning of that so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al halim al halim and there is none like him in all of his attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala as uh, the person, a human, may be described as such, as Halim. And there were from the Arabs, even in the time of Jahiliya, and after that, those who are well known for this, right? And yani this quality that even sometimes they will have, as they mention in some of the books of uh, literature, yani Adab, that they will send someone, get such and such person get him angry and you will get this and that and this that they promise him you know a pay and a reward to get that person that individual just get him angry because he's known that he's always cool he doesn't get angry you cannot get him angry right so uh, even within the humans uh, there are some who have that quality but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, there is no, no one that is like him. And once again, I remind you, with, throughout all of these names and attributes of Allah that are mentioned, anything that crosses your mind that Allah is like this or that, then Allah is different from that. That is because there is no equal to him. There is no similarity, no similitude, no rival. Subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to him Subhanahu wa ta'ala He is all forbearing Subhanahu wa ta'ala Wasi'a hilmuhu ahl al-kufr His forbearance encompasses Those who disbelieve in him They don't even believe in him Period Or they associate partners Alongside with him Or they attribute The good things That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Is giving them they attribute them to other than him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is forbearing. He still provides for those humans who disbelieve in him. He also looks after and provides for those who disobey him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives them chance to, to repent. He doesn't swiftly punish them. Although if he wanted he is Sari al Iqab. He could. He is very quick in his punishment. But then he is also Al Halim. 
So he is all forbearing. He gives them time to repent and uh, retract. So uh, this is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Halim. And there is the hadith which says, ما أحد أصبر على أذن يسمعه من الله تعالى No one who is more patient than uh, for, for harm that he hears more than Allah تعالى Now uh, the name As-Sabur is mentioned in some narrations but that narration or that list uh, there isn't a direct explicit text saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is As-Sabur Right? There isn't. There isn't. We have Al-Halim. But you have something like a, a verb like this or like a, a noun like this one. No one is more patient. Asbar. Right? And from this, some they have derived As-Sabur. But uh, there isn't a direct text for this one, for As-Sabur. But Al-Halim, uh, we have text in the Quran. So there is no one who is more patient towards harm that he hears from Allah Ta'ala. They associate partners in worship with him, يُشْرَكُ بِهِ وَيَجْعَلُونَ لَهُ نِدًّا وَيَجْعَلُونَ لَهُ وَلَدًا They uh, make a child. They attribute to him a child. And they attribute to him rivals, equals, nid. وَهُوَ مَعَ ذَلِكْ يَرْزُقُهُمْ وَيُعَافِيهِمْ وَيُعْطِيهِمْ Yet, he still, subhanahu wa ta'ala, provides for them, gives them well-being, and he grants them things, right? So, if Allah wanted, he could quickly punish them, cut off all means of livelihood for those people who attribute to him uh, those attributes of deficiency. But yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forbearing towards them. He does not... Uh, punish them right away rather he is patient with them subhanahu wa ta'ala and gives them time to repent uh, also uh, the next name is Ash-Shaheed this is the last one that we will do today inshallah ta'ala uh, the name of Allah Ash-Shaheed in Allah ala kulli shay'in Shaheed as in the Quran and Ash-Shaheed uh, it comes from the Shahida to witness and testify. And the witness is called Shahid, Shahid, the one who witnesses, the one who testifies. Shahid is the exaggerated form of that. He witnesses and testifies a lot, right? So that's where the name comes from. And uh, the, the one who testifies, he is someone who witnessed and someone who knows. Right? Even uh, the linguistic meaning has that. You know, you bring a witness to the court. Why is the witness witnessing? Because he witnessed something. He saw, he heard, therefore he is brought to testify in the court for the knowledge that he had, which is based on seeing and hearing. Right? So that's the linguistic meaning where it comes from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Shaheed, there is nothing that escapes him. He always witnesses everything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He always sees and hears everything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he sees everything. Right? And he hears everything. And he is always uh, present. He is never absent. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing, nothing escapes his knowledge. While he is above his throne, subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet he sees and hears and his knowledge is everywhere, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, this is the case. So he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, witnesses, meaning sees and hears and he is not absent. And he will witness, witness subhanahu wa ta'ala, to those who are oppressed on the day of judgment. He is Al-Shaheed subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testified to himself uh, with the greatest thing uh, 
uh, that he created the heavens and the earth for and that is la ilaha illallah and this meaning has passed before shahid allahu annahu la ilaha illahu wal malaika wa ulul ilm Allah testifies that there is no true God except He and also the angels and the people of knowledge Qa'iman bil qist maintaining His creation in justice Subhanakallahumma bihamdik Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk